Hello and welcome for my um, playthrough of Elden Ring. So, this is uh, the part of me having reached uh, Rani's tower, and I think this is a part of the of the game where a lot of key quests that are quite important for the later part of the game um, start opening up. Especially this one, uh, Rani's quest line, which um, is extremely lengthy and uh, intertwined with uh, other quests, other lengthy hmm. quests. But tarnished um, here. Thou beating must have some beating one of the demi gods, go uh, General Radan. No um, acquiring lots of. Um, no reason in particular, thou claimest. Specific Intriguing. weapons, armor sets, and this encounter. Hmm. items. Wilt thou enter into my service? Also, the infamous uh, I stole death uh, long ago. Ash, and search now Spirit for Ash, the, dark path, uh, the mimic that I might one day upend the whole of it, um, rid the world which creates the a, a double well, of your has that character to fight alongside you. Um, in the list of the weapons, uh, we have, well of course, most importantly, the, the this this game's iteration of the Moonlight Greatsword, the Dark Moon Greatsword, and good this was the weapon I was pretty much eyeing for, that I was eyeing good. on then since the release of the game. A half -woven so this character that you see there the on life, screen, I, would have um, thee I built this character for the hidden treasure um, of Nocron, the eternal city. I have called for using, making use below. of the Take of the Dark him, Moon Blade the in mind. And there wilt thou find EG, So up to that point, this character was Salavis. not. Not the most efficient the arts build, also. as it's more like a Keep battle mage than a classic uh, spell casting mage. In gaining from them. What advantage thou canst. I dumped lots of stats sure into the wisdom, just the, same. the stat that um, governs your scaling for magic. And Rani's questline starts with finding her inside her tower speaking to her and oh, then so you were the one speaking to her three servants Rani has explained everything again I the giant Eiji, smith the Karian royal family's dedicated blacksmith and lady and at this point where you see me talking to I the to the giant you smith, I saw I this message pop up. Uh, great, great enemy slain. <laughs> I didn't know what's going on. Uh, that usually only I pops up when you beat a boss. I, um, one me. one of the um, bigger bosses. And. There was there was a, a dragon patrolling outside of the, the tower, and as you will see later, that dragon had been gone after after I, I saw that message pop up. Yeah, so that's still the early early stage of the game, one of the previous um, versions. I'm going below through the see if I can't find the road. Don't keep me waiting. So there are glitches occasionally. The second character to I talk see. to is the uh, half beast be uh, blight with the uh, yes. Yes, wolf I've hat. All about you. That I am will be the most important Perceptor one for the, the Rani, arts. the witch questline. And the third one is uh, I think his name is uh, Salavis. Serving the same lady, I ask that you kindly try not to drag us all down with you. I resign. Come and pay me a visit. Should you? If it were up to me, I would waste my time on the likes of you. He's selling you later on some spells. Um. 
but also also has his own relatively lengthy quest line that again also that only opens up after starting the Rani quest line and then his quest line then also intertwines with a lot of other quests and NPCs so this can make it a bit confusing but this is a part of the game that I really love that um, a lot of the quests and character stories even through they are so far apart at times seem to um, be woven into each other so events can ah, feel very distant in this game and everything can feel so far I apart and isolated from and each other some time before I wake. and then when this things come together it feels it, it makes Still, the world of Elden Ring feel I so organic I look forward to the good news so when I arrive. after having spoken to the three NPCs that Rani asked us. Uh, we have to speak to Rani one more time. And from that point on, the quest can be um, continued with uh, meeting Blight, the half human, half wolf in the uh, underground area of um, Nakron. But there are other parts um, necessary to progress Rani's quest. Um, most importantly, access to um, a treasure box which contains an item that is essential for the quest which can only be accessed by beating Renella at the uh, um, Magic Academy one of the um, her not being a demigod herself but one of the um primary bosses of the game um, and it is necessary to be two of the primary bosses which each have their own um, bigger dungeons um, in, the, in the game as I think on the on the wiki on the extra life. Um, site being um, called Legacy Dungeons because they act like dungeons on the map. So well, Salavas Tower I suppose perhaps I'll give you is something. close to, like to Rani's Tower to and this is where you find Salavas uh, Salavas and before he sells you anything um, he will ask you to Gives this potion to Nefeli, who at that point I didn't know, like I forgot Nefeli, um, who's that? So I didn't progress that quest much further at this point. Most, most quests don't have a timer on them or something like this so quests can be started early on in the game and then progressed um, later on along with moving through the game whenever you the player feel like it and I didn't feel like I wanted to progress that quest at the time of the game but beware, um, for Salavas specifically, he rewards the player with a specific item that boosts 
magic damage. All, all magic damage. And this item is is rewarded for progressing his quest um, significantly and cannot be obtained without. But finishing Rani's quest, like completing Rani's, Rani the Witch's quest completely, will leave Salibus dead and make this specific item unobtainable as Salva's quest thus cannot be progressed, thus the item cannot be obtained. So, um, one of the rare cases where one quest line, progressing one quest line too far, locks you out of finishing another quest line, and thus locks you from obtaining an item. Uh, huge, huge regret. Um, I had to trade that item back on this character from a different character that doesn't need that item. Something I did much, much, much later on. Um, so, after that, I went to the Magic Academy. As you see, this is one of the early areas of the Magic Academy dungeon. And this is... This is necessary. It's necessary to finish the Academy. And beat the boss. So I didn't record all the all the way all the struggle on the way there. But this is me having reached the the final boss of that Legacy dungeon. Which is uh Queen Renala. I, I always mix up the name like this. Hush little Calva. I'll soon birth thee a new Her not being a, a small lore fresh and aspect pure. thrown aside, her not being a demigod herself, but still holding one of the great runes. Actually not she herself is the holder of the great rune, but the little egg she's holding. And her boss fight has a unique mechanic where she's surrounded by these um, academy students crouching on the ground and they're kind of assisting her and she's just floating there in the sky you know, in the air in the center of the room and I didn't really understand mechanic of that battle. I just went into battle and tried to slay as many of these. And you can see I started the battle with two, two phantoms at my side. One left already. And it seems like the other one left as well. So they had enough with me. The mechanic is that one of those those students crouching on the ground will be surrounded by a yellow golden glow and attacking that specific enemy will weaken the, the barrier uh, that's uh, suspending the witch queen in the air and doing that for two three times will make the, the area pop, uh, the, the, the bubble, the area pop and make her drop to the ground and open her up for three attacks. Um, usually, 
usually doing that two times will be sufficient uh, in reducing her life to zero. So, that's part. That's pretty much the first phase of her battle. But the first phase is just. just a joke. Um, I think the chance of dying there is absolutely minuscule. And as you see, we can just play all in on her and like. easily chopping off half of her life. Super easy. Uh, there you see another one of these being surrounded by the yellow bone glow. Like I said, taking out um, two to three students, like there in the background, that are surrounded by this yellowish glow, will make the, the barrier stain in between pop and make her drop. has surprisingly lengthy cutscenes. Not RPG Final Fantasy level lengthy cutscenes, but upon my name is Rani the Witch. Relative to from software games action RPG be disturbed by thee. Games, it's a quite a lengthy cutscene for a boss, Foul I think. Trespasser. And send word far and wide. The second phase is quite a bit more dangerous, but not difficult per but se. The last queen as of Karia, in her second phase, Bernana she gets staggered extremely rule. easy. Um, it seems even. Even one-handed light attacks by small weapons seem to stagger her on every hit. So it's possible to almost keep her in constant stagger. But her magic attacks hit hard and she, she tries to... She tries to get out of the damage by, by backstabbing and then quickly casting spells. So, as you see, especially with, with people assisting, it's quite easy to keep her staggered and occasional uh, blood loss even further reduces her life. Um, you might think me having caught her the first time with phantoms assisting me. That this is what made the boss easy, but I fought her alone. Um, um, spirit ashes do a great help, especially the wolves. They are enough to keep her staggered a few times. So Where did he flee, it's, my sweetings? It's a boss that players, even unexperienced hide. players, should not there struggle too much and with. Light. Did and not come out, say I. Or will you... <sighs> Is it thy wish to be born anew? To she after the feat offers two two functions. One to um to adjust your, change your character's appearance, a function that is also possible um, at the mirror in the round table. So, I would not a new function, but the second, the second function she offers is to respec your stats, to reassign your stats. So if you you can't level down, if you're level 100, you're level 100, you can't go level 99. Never ever. You can only level up, not down. 
but being at level 100 you put your stats into different you put points into different stats like strength, dexterity, wisdom and faith and you can respec using her if you have a specific item which can be farmed it's quite abundant in the game and also after defeating her um, her in her room in the boss room there's a chest a treasure chest which you might have seen in the background just now which contains an item that is absolutely essential in progressing Rani the Witch's questline. From the Academy, the main road leads further north, but the bridge is broken and jumping down leads nowhere but to death, as you've seen. But you can use this um, magic sigil, this, this magic, what call like a like an emblem. Uh, the seal, the blue shiny um, symbol floating there in the in the sky, the magic rune. Touching it teleports you to the end of the bridge. So even if it's a open world game, there is there's always something that seems like a main road, like. A road that's a bit wider that gives the game um, that gives the game some a path that you can walk and it's very tempting to just stay on this main road and I think that's actually even advisable but New players should not be should be hung up on having to progress that road. Um, yes, the main road is usually the one that I would stick to on the first playthrough, and then like explore off the road to the left and to the right, but then always come back to the main road but at some point difficulty will spike and the game expects you to venture into different areas uh, east west especially south to the different continents in the game um, and this main road that I'm progressing on right now will soon lead to um, a great lift and that lift can only be operated by obtaining two halves of a metal which are scattered in the world these are easily obtainable if you know where to find them But um, difficulty clearly spikes after that point in the game, reaching the late mid-game area, Atlas Plateau. Well, not mid-game area. part is not all super important and essential to finishing the quest line of Rani the Witch.
So. So my, my main my main plan at this point in the game was having the Rani the Witch quest line in the back of my head. And second trying to progress further north on the main road. I think I get triggered too much by every random enemy, like like a dog having to run after a stick. Like, I, enemy oh, 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 oh. got me killed way too often. Um, fighting every every mob, every every single enemy in the game, I think it's not worth it. I mean enemies respawn after every rest at the, at the grace. Um, most standard enemies drop shitty uh, things. Mm. Some have a chance to drop um, to drop shards of upgrade stones. But being able to buy them at the vendor later on um, and usually it's much easier to farm runes than use the runes to buy, to buy upgrade materials way way faster than trying to farm upgrade materials. Farming upgrade materials versus farming runes and using the runes to buy upgrade materials. Second one, second option, way, way, way faster. So, I wouldn't bother farming for upgrade materials in this game. Any upgrade materials, uh, enemies on the way drop is a nicety, but Upgrading in this game is not an issue. I think that's the least to farm for in this game. Generally, I, I found myself farming relatively little. Um, later on, I, I specifically farmed an infamous farming spot to to get my characters level up significantly due to um, having um, had always having had the, the, the dark um, moon great sword in mind which has very specific stat requirements especially in um, intelligence um, So my goal at that point in the game was to to level up, to progress a bit in the main game before continuing um, Rani the Witch's main quest, which also, like I said a few minutes ago, involves defeating one of the demigods, General Radan, who is um, for low level to mid level players, new players. Um, Possibly a huge challenge, and with my character having been very, very specialized towards a weapon that I didn't even have hold of yet, I felt I, I played kind of on, on difficult mode. I think I could have. The game could have been much, much easier for me 
Um, just keeping my stats on, on, on physical, just a pure strength build. Getting through the Rani quest and then, and then later re reassigning, respecting my stats. Um, using the feature that opens up after defeating the boss, Green uh, Renala. Um, so. I made the game unnecessarily difficult for myself. But also this was my first run, it's not a speed run, it's a, it's a slow run, right? And you can't enjoy me talking if it's, uh, it's just a 30 minute video, right? So, um... This is the Atlas Plateau, and I think I think difficulty from here on has um, is significant um, significant uh, spike. Um, these are not the knight type enemies. These are just the the regular foot soldier enemies and they, they should not pose such a threat where you would want to single them out and try to, to take them on one by one only. These, these knights, they usually do pose a bigger threat the way to deal with them is, um, especially the ones on horses, is getting them with two charged strong attacks, which usually dismounts them, gets them landing on their back, and opens them up for a critical attack. Also, never forget, uh, look out for the for the fire, for the for the grace, and also for maps. <coughs> You see this uh, little golden shining tree, they have a golden seed, which can be used to increase the number of um, flask uses. A flask being the item that is your primary source, your primary way to heal. So having more flasks makes the, ge the game way easier. And. I said in a previous video, usually on these stone monuments, on the way, usually on um, a main road, well, these are usually never ever hidden. They're, there's so much in the open that, um, yeah, they can be missed by new players, not looking out for them. But Staying on the main road, usually you come across these um, map pieces frequently. Um, expanding your world map, which in this game, being an open world game, um, makes navigating much easier, makes finding items much easier. Especially if you look something up online where a specific weapon, armor, or item pieces. Um, um, here's this knight dropped uh, a great sword for me. Um, a weapon that I was not particularly farming for, but a weapon that I was having an eye on. Um, 
me being under leveled, especially in my vitality, having not enough health. Um, I think it was. I, I should have rather just dashed through them. Getting past them, um, you'll reach. Um, you'll reach the, an area inside the wall, which is closest to the capital, Lindell. Um, from here, you can see the inner wall surrounding the capital. Outside of the outer wall are these two to three sentinels. Um, so, pretty much two bosses that protect the main game. But you can't just walk past them, there's no requirement to battle them. And they're quite strong. So to take a break from um, progression, from from progressing in the game story and any quest, I just did some invading as a red phantom. I, I don't usually play invasions. I'm not big into PvP, at least not right now. I, I, I absolutely enjoy invading and being invaded. Um, I think I, I don't hold any particular honor in fights. It's just like, hey, you're coming into my world to wipe my ass, so <laughs> you have the, the enemies on your side, so I have my friends on my side, so I just try to progress through the game. And I see this as just a mechanic for invaders to have some fun and for the player to get invaded to increase tension. His support was was leaping off of controller it seems and um this mage by himself even through I think his build was probably more dedicated as I I already said my character was more of a, a battle mage not really making best use of the stats I have. Way fewer spells and not that much um, mana, that much magic points as you can see. He was relying too heavily on, on that one spell. Um, it's it's a delayed attack that it works well in open field, but not so much in close environment. And with him, once I build up that that thrust damage, it was dropped. I just needed those two, three hits on him, along with the proc, with the frost proc to get him. Me feeling confident, I went for a second invasion. And I, I think I think also another another thing that 
possibly motivated me to get into some PvP was um, the prospect of farming in a more fun way. Um, I didn't want to rely to farming methods at this point and um, well, use farming sp spot. I, I, I invaded those two guys again and again same two guys pretending to be to be off screen uh, to be to be asleep uh, but this time they both attacked me with their magic can be OP, it can be absolutely overpowered, especially when you have multiple mages throwing everything at you, like one mage you can dodge, you, with melee fighters you can outrun them, but with different mages that just spam everything at you that they have, it's hard, you, you, you're gonna get, you're gonna get grounded. Um, Of the, of the great lift that you seen me take before, um, leads um, pass leads to this little village. Um, and all of the enemies here have like a madness theme, like a lot of them, even the rats inflict madness. Um, how, how the madness mechanic worked, I, um, I think it, it staggers you and causes a small percentage damage. So, not unlike triggering blood or frost. And past this little village, going up this um this pass further to the to the to the top of the mountain, there's a little um, cathedral or little little church, which a bonfire. Oh, sorry, my my uh, Dark Souls jar jargon, <laughs> my. Dark Souls terminology, it's a grace, not a bonfire. Um, so at the grace, there's also a grace inside, but the most important part is that at that church, next to the grace, uh, there's a, um, a dead maiden in front of a chair. And another quest requires you to get blood from a maiden to taint a letter or a piece of cloth in uh, Maiden's Blood. Um, which is very essential to get an item through progressing a questline. And with that item you can teleport to a very endgame area with enemies that um, offer lots of souls. And with the most infamous Rune farming spot in the Elden Ring game. So before trying to progress Granny the Witch's quest, which again involves fighting the demigod General Radan, I felt like leveling up, thus abusing the farming spot, thus needing that item. Thus, to progress the questline that gives me the item I need to reach that point of the hill and to try me to reach there. Yeah, it's like... Horrible. I 
guessing listening to myself must sound horrible, but it's that's just the way it is. It's like quests in these games are extremely lengthy some and require you to to get pretty much across the game map. Um So I got the item, but I, I didn't I didn't touch the the grace. And this invader, an NPC invader, um, is quite strong, especially due to his madness-inducing flame attacks. In the games, these are usually the yellow flames yellow-black flames, indicator for the madness. So, the game has a certain theme, like, like a color-coded theme. Like, standard fire attacks are just orange-red, like the fiery. Then there are the cherry-red flames, which are blood flames. That usually also induce um, blood loss. And then you have the black flames, which um, in the games are called the heretical flame that has the property of chipping away your health. Um, then there's something like the the yellow flame or the the flame of madness, the flame of chaos, which in the game is represented as a yellow, slightly neon yellow, greenish flame. Um, I mean, very. it's a fantasy game, it's a fantasy world, but um, I love the variety. This game introduced um, in contrast to its spiritual predecessors, um, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro. And this is the character that I was speaking about. You meet him the first time once you step out of the, the starting dungeon. And the first time you see the, the Earth Tree. He's pretty much the first NPC you meet in the game. The who tells you to visit the round table dynasty. and Down. after you defeat uh, Give me your finger. a Godric this noble blood will be an um, immutable badge of honor once it settles the, the first of the you. first of the demigods he moves to this location and asks you um, opens up a quest line that involves first invading Five times. Oh, good heavens. Clench your teeth or something. I thought that scene was nasty. I was I was I was actually worried my character model might have like Never a like one digit less like a feeling of like I, I might swing my sword like, you like just, Moog, just all of us. Three fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I thought like Oh oh shit, he's he's Sweetest scream. He's my legitimately lovely. ripping off my finger. Like, is my oh, character gonna look lovely. like this? And I, I, you I checked this. with the cam to see the hand holding this, a metal the sword, the katana, and I was like, oh, it's, it's just an in-game item. Still kind of creepy. I've gone out of my way to once, one to once you invade it five you times, use it just yet. Uh, regardless if Meet it's successful or not, if you die or win, um, he will hand you that cloth that you need to drench dignity. in maiden blood must endure at the top of the of this church that you've seen me before. Ah, it is trying. And once handing one him the the, the claws drenched in maiden blood. Asking, right, my lambkin? 
Um, you can perform that ritual to get the, the finger that allows you um, multiple invasions that can be used in, infinitely, which is pretty much your own finger. And he gives you this item, which lets you teleport to an end game area. Uh, Mok Mokwin's Mokwin Palace. Um, and there's a... I, I totally missed that. There's a grace right in front of me, like... 10, 10 meters from where I started. I should have I activated that, that grace. But I was just set on getting to that farming spot. And if you if you ride the other way around, like follow follow the path, uh, tugging the left wall, like you like you see me do. Pretty pretty much go straight, straight, straight. Um, more or less tugging the left wall. Follow that 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 little lake of blood up that hill you come past these um albinorix i think that's how they're called those little turtle like humanoids activate the grace and this is where you need to be this is the, the infamous farming spot beware Enemies might drop ton of runes, but they're also pretty strong, at especially for low to mid-level players. Some attacks can one-shot you, especially those this rolling, like the side side wave spinning. And I, I first I first try to take them on one by one. Them each dropping 2,000 runes. It would be a viable option to kill them one at a time. That would be a decently efficient way to farm runes, but um, there's there's a weapon. Um, which lets you send out a golden wave pretty much killing or hitting all enemies in a white arc in a white very very long and white um, pass in front of you making it possible to kill them all, all these all these enemies all of them in a single swipe which is Probably the single most efficient way of farming runes. By far, the by far most efficient way. Um, me, me not having the stats for that weapon, me not having that weapon. Also, um, that farming method. Out of question. Um, and taking them on, it is, is just barely the third best way of farming in that region. I think it's not even the third best way of farming in the game. There are probably better ways to farm runes than taking all these turtles on one by one. After that round of, of trying to slaughter them one after another, um, which did net me quite a few souls in total, like uh, almost 40,000 40, runes, um, I, I switched to to this farming method, which is um, the most cheesy way to get runes. Firing an arrow or um, a bolt 
at this birdie attracts him and makes him run into the abyss, dropping to his death and netting you his runes. And because you're so close to your grace and he gives so many runes, um, it can just be repeated so fast. He nets like 11,000 runes, not, not as much as method number one, using that one specific weapons to release a golden wave and kill all the turtles which nets you about a bit less than 40,000 but this can be done a little bit faster the birdie nets you 11,000 does not require any specific weapon just any any bow any crossbow and it's safe, it's super safe, like, it doesn't require any effort, it's fast, it's safe, um, it's so easy, it's just so easy, it's unbelievably easy, and up to level 100, the, the requirement to level up one level, makes it so that half an hour will earn you like 500,000 runes making it possible to level up like 10, 20 levels so it's possible I think to get from level 20 to level 100 in like a bit more than 30 minutes easy peasy like um, and after after the the grind after abusing this farming spot um, my character had not been the same my character was just way more vitality way more life way more robust um, from from that point on, the only thing that I wanted to have before I tried to tackle General Radan and before I tried to continue the quest of Rani the Witch was the Moon Veil Katana, which is um, a reward for beating a certain boss in a dungeon in the Gale Tunnel. But the thing is, the Gale Tunnel has two entrances, and this is one of the entrances. I found, but it is not the one which leads further down. There's a second entrance, which is close to the to the cliff, to the to the north of this continent. So going from this, the further north, the, the further furthest north bonfire here on that continent, following a little bit this um this cliff, this line. Um, dropping down in this spot, um, a little bit hidden to the side, you find the second semi-hidden entrance to the Gale Tunnel. And my, my, my animal instinct is in my dog hunting after a stick. I could have just ignored these two. They, they were even turning their back to me. Like, they don't give many souls, but like, throwing a stick and like, I, I, I had to, I had to take them out. Like, like, like a foaming dog. Like, But that's the entrance, the second entrance to the Gale Tunnel. All not difficult at this level. Um,
in these tunnels, I think it's very advisable to, to check out the walls. They're often um, like mineral chunks, like crystals protruding, which um, can be farmed for upgrade materials. So these, these caves, I think, are the number one spot to quickly get a lot of upgrade materials before you can even buy an infinite amount at the vendor at the round table. So for speedrunners, or well not even just speedrunners, just people who want to quickly upgrade their main weapon, I think these some of these dungeons are extremely rewarding. Um, lengthy it's it is uh, a medium-sized dungeon it has one of these octopus snake tentacle thingy enemies um, they have incredible health but they're extremely susceptible to um, being opened up to a critical via via heavy heavy attacks, heavy charge attacks, and he, here you see the those glowing like the crystal things sticking to the wall that I was talking about. Uh, these are um, upgrade materials. This is where the boss is close. Behind that giant door to the right. And this little door to the left opens up the way to the other entrance of the Gale Tunnel that I'm in and that you've previously seen me enter. But this door, this little door, can only be opened up from the inside, opening this shortcut. Makes it much easier to repeat the boss fight if you lose. Um, it is not super duper difficult, but this boss's um, lava shots are super annoying. I read it's, it's quite susceptible to rocks. So I summon this dog, which can inflict rot, but it was just a waste. This, this dog didn't help me much, and it turns out I didn't need this dog much. I first planned to just cheese the boss, to have the boss be inflicted with rot, and then have the rot melt away the health of this boss was me kind of just being playing defensively. Um, but after that dog had been killed, I just, I just thought like, okay, let's let's take on the boss the good old way, just just him and me. And if these lava lava puddles that 
just the most annoying. I think at lower levels, especially those hits can hit hard. He, he has the potential to hit hard and those lava puddles deal additional damage. Um, and he is obviously quite immune to fire damage, so don't try to fight him with a fire infused weapon. Magic seems to do exceptionally well. Thing is also, um, charged, charged magic attacks have more poise breaking potential than regular magic attacks. They don't do as much poise damage as a charged heavy with a melee weapon, but they add up and they make it much more likely to break a boss's if followed up. I mean, at that point, he's been dead. He was already dead. Yeah. yeah. And there it is. The Moon Veil Katana. Yeah, baby. It's like... I mean, it's an infamous weapon, especially... Especially in the first, in the early days of the game, after the release, this game was just so overpowered. It was one of the few weapons, I mean, there are weapons that were too weak, that were, that got a boost, that got improved with consecutive um, version updates of the game. This was one of the few weapons that got nerfed, and it got nerfed hard, and it's still good. That tells you how utterly broken it was in the beginning, like, it was effing broken, like, especially the heavy attack hit two times with the main blade and the magic project pro projectile that got off the blade. I also did ridiculous poise damage. Was the potential to open up most bosses with just two weapon arts, with just two heavy weapon arts um, that already did a lot of damage on their own, had excellent reach. Um, this, this weapon was pretty much easy mode, like, um, after getting that weapon it felt like uh, all, all the struggle of the first, I don't know, 20-30 hours of the game, um, all the hardships turned into superiority with that weapon. And I didn't know it's that infamous at that point, it just suited my build. And it was the starting point for me to um, effectively deal with um, all that would come after that point. <laughs>